Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Kevin. Well, today we want to do a video to show you guys how we use some of the things that we make here on the homestead in the kitchen. We're always teaching you guys how to do things like canning salsa, canning your home raised chicken, making cheese, and other things, but we rarely show you how we use those things on a daily basis to make delicious meals for our family. But today, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be making one of my favorite things to make. So let's get started. So today we're going to be making Mexican pizza. It uses mostly homegrown ingredients. The only thing that isn't raised right here on the homestead is going to be our wheat, but we are going to grind some fresh wheat berries to have some freshly ground wheat so we can have freshly made flour. It's going to be a great dinner for us tonight. I'm excited to show you guys how we can do this. There's really some very simple ingredients for the sauce. We're going to be using two jars of our home canned salsa. We're going to be using some of our canned chicken that we did a video about just a couple weeks ago showing you guys how to can chicken. We're going to be using some homemade mozzarella from our, from our cow. One of our daughters is actually in charge of making the mozzarella here on the farm. And so this is one of the uh, blocks of mozzarella that one of our daughters made. And then we're going to be using some wheat berries to grind into flour. Now the wheat berries we didn't grow here, but we do buy these in bulk. These are organic wheat berries that we buy from a company called Azure Standard. Azure Standard is a company where you can order bulk organic products in for very good prices. They deliver once a month to your community and then everybody who has ordered shows up at a specific spot to pick up their orders. And it's a really great way to be able to afford organic. Uh, on a much uh, smaller budget than you would at the store. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn these wheat berries into flour and then we're going to get started on everything else. Now the recipe that we're going to be making today is going to make two pizzas. So we're going to need four and a half cups of flour. So we're going to start with three cups of wheat berries. This is soft white wheat. Uh, you can also use hard red wheat. Uh, I just like the soft white wheat because I my personal preference I think it makes a better pizza crust. Now I want to tell you guys if you hear some peeping in the background of this video it's because we actually have our turkeys hatching right now out of our in our incubator. We've had five hatched so far and hopefully we're gonna have quite a few more. So you might hear some peeping in the background that's because we're about to get more turkeys here on the homestead. All right, so we're gonna start by putting these into the grinder. We did a video a couple months ago showing you guys all the different grain mills that we have. And the electric grain mill that we had in that video actually broke down like three days after we shot that video. So we did have to go out and buy a new one. And we bought this one here. This is a Nutra mill. Uh, so far, we're really liking it. We've used it quite a few times already, and we do really like it. So we're going to uh, just put in our three and a half or three cups of wheat berries. And basically the way this works is we'll just turn it on, it'll grind it, and all of the flour will end up over here in this canister. I'm going to grind this on a, a medium setting, so not super fine, but not coarse either. So on a medium setting, and then we'll be able to start on everything else. So the only drawback that I've found on this new grinder so far is that when you are grinding, this little seal around the side doesn't prevent all of the flour dust from coming out. So what we've done is just throw a towel over it while we're grinding and that takes care of the problem. Let's get these ground and we'll be able to start making our pizza. All right, that is done. Only takes about a minute to grind that up. This is a really nice unit to have. All right, let's take this off. There you can see all of the nicely ground flour. And then we'll just take a spatula and kind of stir it around that gets any air out that's in there. Otherwise, when you measure it, you won't get an accurate measurement. All right, we're just going to set that off to the side until we need it for the crust. 
But let's go on to making our sauce. All right, for our sauce, we're going to be using two jars of salsa. Now, we do need to strain it to get most of the liquid off so that it ends up being thicker. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use a canning funnel and a strainer. And we'll just strain that through and we'll keep out the chunky stuff. And then we're going to grind it up in our uh, ninja thing here. All right, we get a lot of questions about this thing when we're using it on videos. It's called a Praia lid and it's actually an antique. So it's not something you can just go out and buy anymore, but you might want to watch in antique shops to see if you can find one because they're actually pretty cool. All right, we're going to strain this through. All right, now that that is pretty well strained, we're going to go ahead and put it in here. Now, if you don't have home canned salsa or other homegrown ingredients like this, you can definitely use store-bought ingredients as well. You'll just want to do basically the same thing. And the reason we're straining this is just so that the sauce turns out nice and thick and we don't have all that extra water in there. All right, well that second one finishes straining. We're going to go ahead and put this one and grind it up. Otherwise, I don't think they're both gonna fit. So we'll put this on. All right. Now we'll add our second one and grind it up some more. All right, now that second one, I didn't grind up quite as much because a little bit of chunkiness in your sauce is good. So now we're just gonna put that into a saucepan and we'll put that on the stove and just let it simmer to thicken up even a little more. Now that the sauce is done, it's time to move on to grating the cheese. Now again, we're using homemade mozzarella uh, but if you need to use store-bought mozzarella, that's great. You can do that as well. So uh, one thing that I've learned after making a lot of pizzas, because we love pizza here on our farm, so we make a lot of pizzas, is to do all of the prep work up front before you start on the crust. Otherwise, you get to the point where it's time to start assembling and realize that you still have too many things to do. So we're going to just get all of this done first, and then we'll start making our pizza crust. So this is about a pound of mozzarella we're going to use about a half pound per pizza, so we're just gonna cut this in half. And mozzarella, if you learn how to make it yourself, uh, freezes really well. We actually had this in the freezer and then I just thawed it out to make pizza today and this will be great. It freezes and thaws out perfectly. If you wanna learn how to make mozzarella, I actually did a video about it several months ago teaching you how, it's super easy. You can even make it from store-bought milk if you want to. All right, we're gonna grind this up. I just use it in my food processor. And we're just gonna shred it and set it off to the side till we're ready to use it. All right, let's grind up the cheese for the second pizza. Now, you can use more or less cheese, depending on how you like it. For us, half a pound per pizza is just about perfect. We'll just set those off to the side until we need them on the pizza. 
The next thing that we're going to get ready to prep is our canned chicken. Let me open that up and we'll use probably about a half a jar for the two pizzas. Okay, now for the chicken. Now again, this is chicken that we raised, uh, that we processed right here on the farm just a couple weeks ago, I guess. And we actually did a video showing you guys how to can your own chicken. Now, if you don't have canned chicken, you don't have to use canned. We just do it because that's what we have and it's easy and fast. And a lot of times pizza night is kind of a last minute, quick throw it together kind of, kind of night here. So this is a good quick meal. But if you have chicken breast, you can fry up or you could use ground meat, whatever you like is what you should use. And we don't go overboard with meat either. When you start to raise all of your own meat, uh, you gain a little more appreciation for how valuable it is. So we don't go overboard with this. There's gonna be plenty of protein in this with the cheese and the meat and everything else. So uh, this is probably good for the two pizzas. We'll just chop this up a little bit and then we'll set that off to the side as well. Now the last thing that we have to get ready before we can start on the pizza crust is making some taco seasoning. Taco seasoning is so easy to make. No need to buy those little packets at the store. It's so easy to make. You probably already have all the ingredients at home anyway. Let's make some up so that we can sprinkle it on our pizza. All right, homemade taco seasoning. Super simple, three ingredients, and you'll never buy it at the store again. First thing that we're going to use is some chili powder. Now we buy all of these spices in bulk as well through Azure Standard. Anything we can't grow, we buy in bulk if we can. So it's going to start, we're going to use two tablespoons of chili powder. We're going to use one tablespoon of cumin. and one tablespoon of granulated garlic. And that's all you need to make an awesome taco seasoning. Now, if you wanna add a little bit of salt, you can as well. I personally don't because the ingredients that we're using is already pretty salty. We put salt in our chicken when we can it and the mozzarella already has quite a bit of salt in it. So um, for us, we don't add extra salt, but that's everybody's you know, decision. All right, look at that. I wish you guys could smell it. It smells just like taco seasoning that you buy at the store. We're gonna set that off to the side as well, and now we can finally get started on making our pizza crust. All right, time to get started on the crust. First thing we're gonna be using is that awesome flour that we just made a little while ago. This is what makes this pizza so great, is a nice whole wheat crust has all of the good nutrition in there that you lose when you use you know, all-purpose flour. We're gonna start with four and a half cups of flour. And again, this is gonna make two pizzas. And I don't get too fancy here. I don't weigh it out. I don't go overboard measuring. I just do the best I can. We have a term around our homestead. We call it homestead perfect. And that's how we cook as well. Every recipe is just kind of a guideline. Look at that. I think that three cups of berries made just about the right amount of flour. Plus a little extra that we can put on our kneading board when we need to knead the crust later. All right, so we've got four and a half cups of flour. And then we're going to add two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast, two and a quarter teaspoons of sugar, and we use raw organic sugar. You can use whatever you have. And then um, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. This is pink Himalayan salt, but you can use regular table salt. That'll work just as well. We're gonna put on our whisk and we're gonna mix all of that together really well. And once that's mixed together, we're gonna to add some oil and we're gonna add some hot water. Now we're gonna add three tablespoons of oil. I'm gonna be using avocado oil. It's one of our favorite oils to use and it's pretty healthy for you. So we're gonna add three tablespoons. Again, I don't measure this. I just kind of pour and if you get a little extra, it doesn't really matter. 
So one, two, three. And I like to do this while I still have the whisk on there before I switch to the dough hook. For some reason, to me, it just feels like it mixes it in better. We're gonna slowly add our water, about a cup at first. And as you make more pizzas and more, use this recipe more times, you'll get kind of a feeling for what it's supposed to look like. It's best to use a spatula to kind of help get all of the dry ingredients in there. Now one thing that I've learned as I, as I start to use more and more whole wheat flour is that one, to me it doesn't seem like you need quite as much water and it seems like you need to knead it a lot more to get that same kind of elasticy feeling that you get with um, all purpose flour. All right, this is just about ready. I've been letting the mixer run here for, I don't know, three or four minutes. We're gonna take this dough out. You can see that this has turned into a nice dough ball. I'm gonna go ahead and get out my uh, kneading board and then we'll get ready to move on with making our pizza. All right, I've got my kneading board all set up. Now, I get a lot of questions about this, what it is, how I made it. It's really just a piece of oak plywood that I bought probably 10 years ago and I've just been using it ever since. It really kind of gets better with age as you use it. Flour kind of gets worked down into the wood and it's kind of like cast iron. The more you use it, the better it gets. So I'm gonna just knead this just a couple times by hand here. And then we're just gonna let it sit while we preheat our oven. All right, we're just gonna cover that up and we're going to let that sit uh, while we preheat our oven to 450 degrees. I don't set a timer for this. The way I time it is when the oven is preheated, I'm ready to start making my pizza. All right, our timer went off that our oven is preheated, so now we can get started making our pizzas. So again, this is gonna make two pizza crusts, so we're gonna start by cutting this in half. And it is a little different working with the whole wheat versus regular all-purpose flour. So uh, we're gonna set one half of this off to the side to start with, and then the second half we're gonna knead just a couple times, and then we'll be able to start rolling it out into our pizza crust. Now there's a lot of different ways to make pizza crust, so if you have a favorite way to do it, go ahead and do it that way. I'm gonna show you the way that I like to do it. And the key is to make sure you're always getting enough flour so it's not gonna stick. Now for Mexican pizza, we like more of a thin crust pizza. So I'm not gonna roll it out and actually make a you know folded uh, crust around the edge. We're just gonna leave it like this. So we roll it out just about the size of our pizza pan, fold it up, and then we'll just unfold it right onto our pizza pan. Set that one off to the side, and we'll just do the same thing with this other crust. Knead it a couple times, and then we'll start rolling it out. All right, both of our pizza crusts are rolled out and on the pans. Now, what I like to do is take a fork, and I just kind of do this all over the pizza crust, and that will stop it from getting any big air bubbles when you're baking it. Now, this next step is probably the most controversial step in the entire process because people have their own opinions on what you should do. I like to pre-bake my crust a little bit before I start putting the toppings on and I know a lot of people say don't do that, but it's the way I do it and it turns out great, so I'm gonna keep doing it. So we're gonna put these in the oven for about five minutes and then we'll start putting our toppings on. All right, 
We have these baked for just five minutes. They're definitely not done, but as far as I'm concerned, it makes the toppings stay on a little bit better. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start by putting our sauce on. The amount of sauce per pizza, again, is one of those personal preference things, so you do what you like. All right, next thing is, that I like to do is put pop about half of the cheese on. Now when you're doing home grated cheese, it doesn't come apart quite as easily as the store bought cheese because in the store when you buy pre-grated cheese, they put anti-caking things on them and some of those aren't so good for you. So uh, you're always better off even if you're buying store bought cheese to buy a block of cheese and grate it yourself, at least in my opinion. All right, so we've got about half of our cheese on both the pizzas, maybe a little bit more. Now we're going to put our chicken on. And again, the amount of meat is entirely up to you. You can put more or less, but I think this is plenty. We're just going to divide this between the two pizzas. Next thing that we're going to do is put our taco seasoning on. The way I like to do that is with a little sifter like this. So we're just going to put some into our sifter. And then we'll just shake that on and that lets you get it nice and even on your pizza. And again, like everything else, this is kind of personal preference as to how much. But that looks good to me. Man, I wish you could smell it. It smells so good. Now we're going to put the rest of our cheese on top and we'll be ready to bake these. There we go. Homestead perfect. Let's get them in the oven. In the oven, we're gonna start by putting them in for about seven minutes and then we'll switch them around. All right, the timer's gone off at seven minutes, so we're gonna switch these around. I know they're not gonna be done yet, but we're just gonna switch them around on the oven racks. They are starting to smell great. We'll set it for about another seven minutes and then we'll check on them. All right, the pizzas are done. Let's take them out of the oven. Wow, look how amazing that looks. I wish you guys could smell it. It smells even better than it looks. Now these are super hot. So we're gonna have to let these cool for a while before we cut them. But as soon as they cool down, we'll cut them and give them a try. All right, these have cooled for about 10 minutes. Let's cut one and give it a try. And a nice crispy crust, which is what I like on a Mexican pizza. All right, let's give it a try. Look at that mozzarella. Okay. Yum. That is really good. That homemade taco seasoning really makes it awesome. And the salsa is just the right spiciness. You guys, I hope that you give this a try. This is a really great recipe, a great way to use things that you've made on your own farm. Or even if you don't, if you need to go buy ingredients, that's okay too. Go ahead and give it a try. You'll absolutely love it. I hope if you guys are enjoying our channel that you will hit that subscribe button before you leave. Also remember that the best way you can help us is by sharing our videos on all of your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.